Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the NHL slate for tonight, uh, December 23rd, and I'm really enjoying this. I'm enjoying this process, so I'm going to try to do this daily. Um, I will say that if it's only a two-game slate or something like that, I'm not going to do it, but I've kind of streamlined this where I can get this done, and everybody seems to be doing pretty well, <laughs> kind of following this process and maybe learning how to tweak this to make it a little better even. But uh, it's given people a good baseline to play NHL DFS, uh, whether it be single entry or uh, multi mass multi-entering. And we're going to keep doing it because I, I really enjoy the hockey sweat. I enjoy the results. And the process is very, uh, it, it's very, it's very straightforward, at least the way I'm doing it. Uh, and and I, anyway, let's just get started. It is a, a really nice uh, full slate um, and what we're going to do is the same as usual. And again, when you do YouTube videos, it's, hard, it's kind of hard to know if people are watching this for the first time. So people that have been watching this, they're saying, okay, Eric, you're going to go through the same stuff you always do about how you go through this. And yeah, I have to just for the people that haven't been here yet. Um, by the way, um, I don't do this too often, but uh, if, if you want to join True DFS and be a premium member, you get access to all of these sheets and, and other good stuff and other sports um, as well. I keep forgetting to kind of promote that in the true DFS. Uh, people probably get mad at me for forgetting. Nonetheless, so what we're going to do again, we start off with the team totals. Uh, and then we build up to the projections and build ourselves a, a hand-built lineup. And then you saber sim to build a, a portfolio of lineups. And the way this approach kind of conditions your brain to deal with the slate, I think is really, really good. Um, so again, we're, we're going to look at the implied team totals to figure out which teams, at least instinctively um, or quali quantitatively, should project the best. And we're not going to use the implied team totals from Vegas. We're going to use the implied team totals from the daily fantasy sports projection models. I happen to think that those are more, I don't want to say accurate, but they're more relevant to me because number one, I want to see you know, I don't want to see the implied team totals based on what people's opinions are on the game. You know what I mean? Like on the total itself. I'd like to see people analyzing it from a, a kind of a DFS perspective, I think. So I'm going to uh, continue to do it this way. Uh, the other thing is I'd like to see where the discrepancies lie in how different models are projecting team totals, because if there's, they're really good indicators of ownership. Like if, if you can get, you know, all the main uh, modelers come up with the same teams, then they're probably going to be, you know, uh, probably going to be really popular. But if they can't even agree on the team totals, then it's probably going to be kind of open season. So let's take a look at today's slate. Um, and let's first, I guess we'll start with Saberson. And I'll start using other models too, but these are the three that I automatically have saved on my tab. So um, let's look at anybody's over four. It looks as though Edmonton. Oh, good. It's an Edmonton slate. I love Edmonton slates. Um, I love playing Edmonton. Uh, when they when they go off, they just go off. And when they don't, they don't. Um, so I really like doing this. So, boy, uh, we'll, we'll see what the other models look like, and we'll see how the projections pan out. But having Edmonton with a 4.2 total, ooh, that could be a sheet slate. Then you have... Uh, Ooh, my next favorite team to play, Vegas. They are 3.6. That's strong. Then you have the Kings. The Kings, unfortunately, have been pretty popular recently, and I kind of bit on a really popular King stack the other night. But nonetheless, they do have a 3.6 um, implied team total. Then there's Dallas at 3.6, and then a big drop to the rest. Okay. Well, I shouldn't say that. A little bit to Carolina, Boston, and Washington. But definitely, I think according to Saberson, you have Edmonton, and uh, as, as clearly the top, and then comes down to say Vegas and some of these other 3.6ers. Now let's look at, I don't know, let's look at Daily Roto next. So Daily Roto, they have Carolina a 3.8. They have Boston up at a four. Washington 3.8, Florida up at a four. And then Dallas 3.8, Chicago at four. And they have Edmonton, obviously, at four. But they have it much closer, right? So they have a Calgary almost at four, Vegas almost at four, um, L.A. almost at four, Chicago. Boy, oh, boy, Chicago is terrible. Like, I guess 
this must be a really, really good matchup for them because they're in full tank mode. Nonetheless, um, Dallas 3-8, Florida up at four. So it's a little bit more spread out. It's not as much of, a, of an Edmonton type of model uh, when you look at, at Daily Roto. And then you look at this Daily Faceoff site, which uh, I'm starting to warm up to a little bit. Um, they have Carolina up at the top, which is very surprising to me. Carolina and Minnesota, excuse me, and Dallas at the top at 3-9, 3-8. And then Edmonton below them a little bit, and then a decent drop to the to the Flames. So you're going to have a big uh, Texas Steel Cage match between the Daily Faceoff crew and the Saberson crew um, with respect to what you think of Edmonton. Um, but uh, I think it's safe to say the Carolinas in play, uh, Dallas, Edmonton, and they have Vegas up here as well. Um, they have the Kings. So I think this whole group are teams that we've seen, you know, in the other model. So Carolina, Dallas, Oilers, Flames, Golden, the Golden Knights, and also the Kings are going to be the main teams that at least, you know, if presuming that goals correlate to fantasy points, which is typically the case, um, these are the teams you're going to want to look to. If of course the players project in a way that allows you to play them in their lineups. All right. So with that, with that said, um, this once again is my, uh, are my uh, sheets which combine a lot of different models, uh, projections. And it. what's cool about this is it kind of back tests, back tests them for accuracy a little bit. So I really kind of tweak along the way. Um, and I rank them uh, both by, well, here are fantasy points, but these are points per dollar. This is Sheets Value Score, which is a really, really cool kind of blend of both uh, upside and, uh, and points per dollar which is my favorite way of ranking pretty much all of fantasy sports. Um, so, uh, and here's the ownership, uh, ownership projections as well. And again, here on the right and left, the EV line, power play line, we'll get to that in a second. So what we're going to want to do again is, is, is step one is pure non-algorithm, pure, just visual, you know, just sit back, take a look at this board and ask yourself, are there a bunch of dudes from the same team that are rated high? You know what I mean? And and you want a bunch of dudes because a bunch of dudes means correlation. And, and hockey is actually a pretty big deal. When uh, In hockey, uh, correlation is a very big deal. Uh, I have to pause for just a second. Uh, sorry about that. Um, so I forgot where I was leaving off. Okay, I was about to get into the uh, into the projections here. So again, we're just kind of staring at this and seeing what if we could find like a cluster of dudes that are from the same team and then get really greedy and hope that they are on the same either uh, even strength line or power play line. And, and then try to build a lineup from that. And if we can't, then it's going to be a slate where Saberson is just going to have to help us out. Um, so when I just stare at this right away, the first thing I notice is it really, really good is that we do have a cheap goalie as the top projected goalie from a sheets value score pers perspective. And for those of you who've been following me, this is what I love doing. I love playing the cheapest possible goalie that's relevant. And you actually have two of them. You have Corey Schneider up at the top and also, uh, Juan Saro. So either one of those work. Um, and then you look here you see patrick kane is the top value score but i don't see a lot of chicago's the first thing i see and it's just staring at me is edmondson i mean you got mcdavid dry saddle and hyman rated what fourth fifth and 13th overall um and then you have paul Yarvi right down here in 24th so this is i think this is gonna be an edmonton slate uh, if we can do it, I mean, these guys are always really expensive, but these guys just, you know, they're always, I'm telling you, those of you who've never played Edmonton, they'll frustrate you. And then when they go off in the third period, they will make you a fortune. <laughs> um, the only thing I have found about Edmonton is that they're not, um, matchup proof. In other words, you get to some, some guys say in the NBA that, you say, well, he's low owned because he's against the Celtics, or low owned because he's against the Cleveland, you know, the Cavaliers. But he's matchup proof, so you know you get a chance to play him at low ownership. 
It's not exactly like that I found with Edmonton. Edmonton, when they're playing a team that's really good defensively, they're just not going to be able to go off. And maybe that's kind of goes part and parcel with hockey in general. But uh, so just be careful, just always playing Edmonton. You really want to play Edmonton when you're supposed to play Edmonton, not just every day. So I see these four Edmonton dudes, and that's probably where I'm going to start trying to build. But what else do we see here? You get a couple of Washingtons, so Ovechkin and Strom, but I'm not getting that third one on this board. What about Carolina? Just the one. What about the Kings? You're going to get a, a, another Chalky Kings stack, but maybe. You got two LAs, right? You got Kemp and you have Fiala. Carolina. Okay, there you go. So we have Carolina. We have Burns, Teravanian, and where was the other Carolina guy? Was it? Well, I saw a third one. Yeah, and, and Svechnikov. So you have three Carolinas. Um, what else do we have here? I mean, you have Dallas, but not until you get down all the way to here in Vegas, but not until you get all the way down to here. So I feel as though the two teams I want to try to, to, to build a lineup with are going to be Edmonton and – what before I do that? Yeah, Edmonton oh, – where's one more? Sorry about that. I was going to say Edmonton, Carolina. But here's Columbus. And Columbus, I got one – two, three Columbus guys in here. So three Columbi, so to speak. Um, so yeah, so we're going to try Columbus, Edmonton, and Carolina and see if we can build a lineup with them. And this is what we're going to do. So let's start by just, let's start with Edmonton. Let's see, let's see if we can do this. So we're going to start with, uh, with, with uh, uh, McDavid, Drysidel, Puliarvi, and Hyman, right? Is that what we said? Or is Hyman a wing? Yeah, Hyman's a wing. Now let's see where they what the correlation is with these guys. So he's a one-one. is a two-one. That means they're not in the same line, but the same power play line. Hyman is one-one. And Puliarvi is. One, two. So it's not perfect, okay? But it's something. Um, the thing is, with the four guys, I, I almost kind of want them perfect. But let's let's leave them in for now, and let's put this goalie in. Which was the guy I wanted? The guy from the Islanders? Is that it? Yeah. Um, Schneider at 74. Or actually, play Saros. He's cheaper. Let's play Saros at, at 71. So if you do that, you have 36.25 a man. Now, the first thing I probably want to do is maybe fill out this Edmonton stack a little bit, maybe make it a five-man. But I think what we might be able to accomplish is something from that other stack we've talked about, right? So what was the one that was really cheap? It, it was... Was it Columbus? Well, Columbus wasn't cheap up at the top. They had a, they had a tough uh, tough scene in, in Patrick Lane up here, but and these guys aren't too cheap either. Crap. So it doesn't look like anybody, like even Carolina, has a lot of cheapos in their stacks that we'd be looking at. So that's not going to help. Um, first thing I want to do is let's let's go back to the Edmonton team and see if there's a cheapo within either of these stacks that we can put in to make this work. Um, we RV Tyson Barry 5,100. That's not good enough. Okay. So Yamamoto, he's on the first power play line. Okay. There you go. I think that's actually a really good idea. So, to go back to Edmonton, where are they? We'll go to Yamamoto at twenty six hundred, and now at thirty nine sixty six a man, we could we can play. 
You know, now we can actually make good plays. So you can make like a 5-0 or a 5-2 with Edmonton and make this work. And what makes this all fly are these two cheapos, Pui RV and Yamamoto. And all of this, I believe, is on the first power play. So this is a full power play stack involving two cheapos um, that makes it all work. So this looks good to me. Um, so, again, first thing is you can play Edmonton. And you probably want to make it a full five man uh, to make that work. The let's go back to the others that we talked about. That was Carolina. Let's see what that kind of looks like. Carolina, let's re rank by sheets value score. So Carolina was Teravanian. Oh, he's only four K. That makes that's that's why he's good. So. Tervani at a 4K, Svechnikov, and that was it. And Burns. He's pretty expensive, though. But let's, let's put these in. Uh, let's start with Burns here at, at defense. And then we're going to go uh, with Svechnikov and Tervanian. Who's the other guy? Um, just those three? Yeah, just those three. So let's see. what um their lines are so teravanian is 2-1 burns is 1-1 svechnikov is 1-1 so again we're talking about the power play line here um let's see if there's any carolina guys lurking yeah so so neeson or noson he's he's a cheapo only on the power play line so we could use him as well so let's put him in we'll put in uh noson as the power play guy over here. And you could easily go four or three with Carolina with whatever you want. As a matter of fact, I mean, not to build the whole lineup, but you could use these Carolina pieces to make that Edmonton stack work. So the Edmonton with, with Carolina Edmonton, you know, either a five, two or a four or three with Carolina. I think that's a really, really sharp, uh, sharp idea. Um, Okay, and then the other team I just wanted to look at was Columbus. Um, um, they looked a little expensive, but I'm going to put them anyway. Uh, okay, so you have Patrick Lane. I mean, they can't be any more expensive than Edmonton, obviously. Uh, Patrick Lane, and then there is uh, Johnny Goudreau. Okay, where's Columbus. Johnny Goudreau, and then there is uh, Nyquist. Nyquist, and anybody else from Columbus on this list here? Uh, Lane and Ken Johnson. Okay. So what would be nice if all these guys were correlated? So let's see. So we have uh, Lane, 1-1. One, one. Kent Johnson, 1-1. One, one. Nyquist two one and Goudreau to one one excellent All right so this is this is actually really good so so you could play the Carolina stacks really really easily and you know you could probably mix four threes with Carolina and and Columbus you could mix Edmonton with Carolina Edmonton and Columbus so I think from a hand building perspective today. It's actually a pretty, I don't want to say easy because, you know, you still have to win. But I, I think that 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 the pricing is such and you can make all this stuff work. Um, so in three max or whatever, that's what I would do. I would do like kind of combinations of all that stuff, like Edmonton with, with, with Columbus, Edmonton with uh, Carolina, Carolina with Columbus, and just kind of like birdcage those, you know, all together. Um, all right. Uh, let's now pull up uh, Saberson and see if the Saberson – uh, lineup builder kind of agrees with that type of construction and sometimes it does sometimes it just doesn't uh, but i do feel as though in hockey and mme you, re you really want to use something like saberson to build lineups for you it's just really difficult to find the right correlation and the right when, when you're when you're dealing with more than say you know 20 lineups you could do 20 by hand, but once you get more than that, I mean, you really, it's really difficult. 
Um, and you really want to make sure that you get the right, the right upside. And, and there are other optimizers that do a decent job like fantasy crutcher and, and rotograss, but again, saber sim, I will throw out there is the, the best one with respect to combining upside with, you know, with, with, um, with ownership fade and all that stuff. So right off the bat, I do see a bunch of Edmonton, but let's just take a look. Team stacks. Yep. Edmonton Islanders. Wow. That's interesting. Carolina. Yes, but not as much. So it does prioritize Edmonton, but let's look at context. Let's see what type of stacks we're getting. So yes, a matter of fact, a whole bunch of five twos. And if you look at the five twos, let's see where they're from. Team stacks, five man stacks are actually coming more from from uh, Columbus and the Islanders than from anything else, which is very interesting. I didn't really get so much of the Islanders at all in my at least at least hand build. Like, look at this. Like, if you look at my at my sheets, like I don't see an Islander anywhere on, on the board, you know. And that's what. But but whenever I don't see a guy on the board. And Saberson coming up with them in these as high upside lineups, I will blindly go with the Saberson lineups as far as those go. Now, again, everything can change from now until to lock. So I wouldn't just rely on what I'm saying now. But but if, if it came up similarly where I would be getting no Islanders, but Saberson on my own, but Saberson would give them to me, I would probably just take, them, if you want to know the truth. Um, um And I guess that's pretty much it. I mean, you you could play this slate however you want. You could play it by hand really easily. You could and, and get, you know, good shots. And then you could play it using Saber Sim rather easily. I think it's a really, really nice slate. Hope you guys play. Hope you guys win. Uh, I'll be more than happy to even take second if one of you guys wins. Uh, that will do it. Good luck.